Okay, so we're like two months into to this, the European season at least now. So we want to talk about some of the players, some of the teams that have impressed us. Let's start with players that we would pick out in Europe who've impressed us so far this season. Who've you got? So I want to start talking about Seul Gigasi that plays for Stuttgart. And Stuttgart is balling at the moment. Almost. Not almost. Unexpectedly so. Nobody at home understood what you just said. <laughs> His name. Seul Gigasi. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I could say mm -hmm. Seul Gigasi. Where is he from, Nico? Um, so he's French born, but he's Malian. No. Where is he? Guinea. He's, he's Guinean. <laughs> um, I feel like it would be just as contrived for me to say Seru Girasi, which is also super you forced. You sound so American. Right? Seru Girasi. Girasi, as opposed to his actual name, Seru Girasi. Okay. Um, <laughs> so he's putting up, and I don't like to word, use the word stupid, but he's putting up stupid numbers goal scoring uh -huh. wise. Um, he's got 14 goals all competitions, 13 of which have come in the Bundesliga, but it's the way that he's scoring. He's got power, he's got finesse, he's got composure. Um, he scored in every single game except in Spieltag 6, match day 6 for the Bundesliga. I'm throwing German Ooh, at you so you could be impressed with German, but you don't really care. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. Good. Um, so against Kong he didn't score, and then last weekend he plays against Wolfsburg and he scored a hat-trick. Um, He's just showing quality in moments where you have to finish. Like it's, he's sitting down defenders. He's sitting down goalkeepers with fake, with composure, with everything you want in a player. It's like he reincarnated. He he died and he became Robert Lewandowski the second time because there wasn't people that were putting kill him up. Off? But it, it, he looks like prime Lewandowski. No one was putting up these type of Bundesliga numbers well, you know, since, what's fun, since what's Lewandowski. Funny, actually, even Lewandowski hasn't done it. No, nah, not even. He, to this start is a, the this is a like record this. in Bundesliga, 13 goals in seven mm. matches. Crazy. So. Is this like a stat off? We're going to see who's no, got, this, got most <laughs> <dead>. <laughs> No, this, this is just how good he's been. It's, just it's, to put it in context, this, this is the hottest start a striker's <laughs> ever had in the Bundesliga. Absolutely. The record was 11, and he tied Lewandowski in that Wolfsburg game with that first goal, and then he just scored two more. He's like chipping people, like one touch dink over the goalkeeper, and then he's like receiving the ball, faking, goalkeeper drops, defender drops, finish. But everything goes he, for you. And then power. It, he's, it's like everything in all, one, all in one package. It's incredible to watch. He's never put up these numbers ever in his career. He's matched his season total in all competitions in oh. two months. It's Dang. wildly impressive. All right. Well, who have you got then? Because uh, you can only be second best now. No, I don't think so. <laughs> we're, we're talking about a player who goes from the Bundesliga as a 20-year-old to La Liga, oh, to the I biggest know. club oh, in the world. I know. I know. <laughs> and that would be Jude Bellingham. Uh, Jude Bellingham, to me, uh, We've seen players go to a club like Real Madrid, the biggest club in the world, with the pressure, and they don't live up to expectations, or it takes them some time to settle in. Vinicius Jr., who is one of the world's best wingers, it took him time to settle in. Luka Jovic, who crushed it at Frankfurt before he went to Real Madrid, couldn't settle in. So there's been big players. Kaká, winning World Player of the Year at AC Milan, was, and in Syria, going to Real Madrid and not settling in. So for a 20-year-old to go there and not only settle in, but be the best player mm -hmm. on the pitch for Real Madrid to win them games is so special. And I knew he was good, but this good with, without having time to adjust to a, a new team, a new league, new is language. so impressive. Just a, a top player, top person on and off the pitch. And to do this as a 20-year-old, you just don't know where his ceiling is. Um, and the, our producer sent us a video yesterday of oh. <laughs> someone impersonating Jude Bellingham with his goals, and they're all like tap-ins. And I said, okay, there, are, there have been some nice tap-ins, but for a central midfielder to make so many late runs out of midfield to get into that position while still relying on his defensive responsibilities, and winning the ball for his team and being a good teammate, that's impressive. He's and not supposed to be getting the, this amount of goals. No. So the fact that he has some easy tap-ins, that this is because he's putting himself in those in that position. 
uh, everyone else would have those tap-ins if they could do what he could do, and he can't. Mm. He's also scored some nice other goals that are not tap-ins. So, uh, for me, Jude Bellingham has been uh, a revelation this year. Boss. Love that. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. What do you counter with then? Um, Shocker. I know everyone's going to be really, really surprised to know that I picked a Liverpool player. Wataru Endo? Listen, he, I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that Endo is going to be that number six that we need. No, uh, Dominic Joboschlai. Joboschlai. Nice. I, 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 it took me forever to kind of nail down. I, don't, I still don't think I've nailed the pronunciation, but now that I am saying it, I love saying it. Joboschlai. Um, this guy has been absolutely tremendous for Liverpool. When we talk about Liverpool and kind of their questions in midfield that they had last season because they were I mean they were old and they were slow and it was kind of a, a hot mess and Dominic Schobeschlei has come in and I you know they're starting to kind of make comparisons to a Steven Gerrard and and he has that kind of impact but he's just so he's such a complete footballer and he's he's incredible on the ball. We can see what he I mean he's got the the finishing ability as well. But it's his work rate off the ball as well. He's just he's an incredible athlete if you if you watch him and he's just all over all over the pitch. Um, I'm just I'm so I'm so excited about him. Um, I think he has been the standout player for Liverpool this year, and he feels like a guy. He feels like he's going to kind of carry that, like, talisman mentality for the club, which is exactly, exactly what they needed. And Jesse Marsh, um, who managed him at Salzburg, said he's got – confidence that borders on arrogance which mm -hmm. I thought was but Swaggy. and sometimes yeah and sometimes I think arrogance can have like a not a, a positive connotation but in this sense especially coming to a club like Liverpool that sort of carries that massive those massive expectations you need that and he has just he stepped in and made an immediate impact in an area on the pitch where they needed it the most so what about me McAllister alongside yeah, I, he, what do you think? I, I think that he he's a guy I think they need to play him a little bit higher um, everybody says on the that pitch I just don't I, think and he's I agree. Not, I agree. He's not he's a six. Just, he, he hasn't, and I'm ho that's what, when you mentioned Endo, I'm hoping Endo can come in and be that guy, and then McAllister can kind of, like, be free up to play in a little bit more advanced positions on the on the field, but he hasn't settled in quite the way that Schoboschlei has. I, he, we saw what he did at Brighton last year. I, I still believe that he, Alexis McAllister is a, a top, top, top player, um, but it's just taken him a little bit more. And I think maybe once if, if they find a way, if they, if they can nail down a number six, then I think it'll all start start clicking for them. So let's then talk about teams that have impressed us so far in the season. Should I would should I think yes. that you have chosen <laughs> Liverpool? Have yeah. you? Do you know the reason I chose Liverpool though was because I was, I thought for sure one of these guys was going to choose Leverkusen. Because they've been so so good, but I but yeah, since we're on the Liverpool thing, I'll just continue. You chose Liverpool. I did choose Liverpool. Okay. Because I think for especially for me, because the the I, I don't know what where my are you in the table? Were. We are fourth right. right now. We should be higher and we should be unbeaten. I will not talk about the Tottenham match because it's still it just still makes my Tottenham. I think would have been a good pick for this. The, uh, yeah, Tottenham would have been a good pick. Um, I just couldn't do it. Oh. I know. <laughs> no, I think, because I have a better choice anyways. But if and I was going to go in this Premier League. That, that makes sense. Uh, but I think heading into this season, the my expectations were, I don't want to say low for, for Liverpool, but it, it did seem like they had so much work to be done. And I think that they've done a really good job in the offseason of addressing it. And there just seems to be kind of a rejuvenated spirit at the club. Players like Schobeschlei coming in and, and having that kind of impact. And Mo Salah continuing to, to score goals the way that he did, kind of getting over that drama of, is he going to leave? Is he going to stay? Um, and I, I think that their start to the season has been a lot better than I anticipated and the fact that they've only got one loss they're in good position I'm not saying they're going to win the title but I do think I think that there are going to be several teams competing for the Premier League title at the end of the season and I I would put Liverpool in that group which is exciting because this is a, a club that that should be competing for for Premier League titles and I want to see them back in Champions League so um, yeah they've impressed me because mm. I think my expectations were a little bit Lower heading you, in. Really? You've chosen somebody better than Spurs. Yes. Who? And it's not even close. Stuttgart. They were they were in 16th position last year. They were in the playoff for relegation playoff. So they survived, and now they're in second place in the Bundesliga. Six wins, one loss, and yes, 
Girassi is a player who has helped them and, and has been the difference maker for Stuttgart. So, but in all fairness, they've scored 22 goals in the Bundesliga and have only conceded eight. So it is more of a team performance and they have a match winner in Girassi. So Stuttgart is by far the most impressive team across the five leagues right now, considering where they were last year and where they are now. Because if you look at where they are now with a top striker in Girassi, I don't see them finishing outside of the top five, six, given uh, how, how, how well they've been. And, and the Leipzig game is a little bit unfair. They went into halftime up 1-0. That's their only loss of the season. They're up 1-0, and they conceded five in the second half without a red card. Mm. It was two calamitous errors from the keeper. A football accident. And, and, and then I think the wheels just fell off. But outside of that, it was very uncharacteristic. They've been so solid this season. So Stuttgart, here's your flowers. Seven games in, top performance so far. Young but manager, 41 years old, Sebastian Hoeneß. Incredible. And with Fulrich and Enzo Gijo in, in that, that triangle, th there's something going right there. They, they function so well. Gigasi wouldn't be doing what he's doing without the supporting cast, and they've been doing a really good job. Well, we've taken so long on everything else that you have probably less than 60 seconds this to get through This never happens. I can do it. No, it usually happens the other way around. Yeah. I talk too much and everybody else yeah, has little go. time. Yeah, so let Calma. me just give... Uh, <laughs> Alexis is like... <laughs> <laughs> Let me give Nice their flowers um, because I don't think too many people expected them to start the season the way they did considering that, for example, that you, you just saw Bulka, their Polish goalkeeper. They had to drop Schmeichel. He decided, the, 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 the manager uh, decided to, to drop Schmeichel and Bulka has been super impressive. And then you've got the two center backs in uh, Dante, who's very experienced, almost old on the scale of like too old but he's killing it he's a captain of the team Jean-Claire Todibo also formerly of Barcelona they begin the goalkeeper and the two center backs a vertical skeleton for the team that gives it a lot of structure organization they love their 4-3-3 Tara Mofi up top has been incredible Kefren Turam and then Endia Yimiche oh I I, it's such a difficult name, Endai um, who's the center defensive mid that came from Turkey, and it's almost unknown to, to the France setup. No one really had him on his radar, and the manager brought him in, Francesco Farioli, also unproven. He, the guy was, no one in Italy knew about him. He was in, in, in Turkey coaching for Fatih Karmgürük and Alanya Spor, like not even like the top teams. And Nice was like, all right, and we'll now they're sitting we'll in second. Shot. They're sitting second place mm. with the only undefeated team in France. Wild. Wow, we. Um, guess what we have next, everybody. Oh my. Alexis is going to do <laughs> the headline. Can we heckle him? Can we do that? Oh, I think he's used to it. He's a stand-up comedian. We should heckle him.